Hi everyone, uh, my name is Wendy Kong. So I'm a software engineer at Posify. I'm a lead at Women Who Code KL. Chim also stole that for me. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, a game I created in Angular. Um, so the gist of the game is basically you are kind of, you, you play as a waiter chef in a food establishment and you get orders and you're supposed to fulfill them in a given amount of time. You win by fulfilling the orders, you lose if you do not. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna demo the game now. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, so, oh no, that's not the game. This is the game. Okay, so orders on the right. I need to find a te tarik and roti baka. So let's, um, let's keep our eyes open, right? Do you see, okay, I see roti baka. I see te tarik, okay, first order done. Second one, saya cincang, eh, eh. Okay, hey, we won. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, it is made with love from Angular and RxJS. And uh, so I, when I was thinking about uh, how to create this game, I thought like the, large, the biggest challenge is handling streams. There are lots of things happening in a game, right? There are things um, falling down, there are click events, there's a scorekeeping, timekeeping, and all of these need to happen like in harmony. You, uh, and also the game needs to keep track of everything. So it sounds a bit overwhelming. Let's throw a bit of RxJX in the, in the mix. So I'll just do a quick walkthrough of how everything came to be. I have a set of objectives, four in, uh, four in total. I need to set a timer. Of course, I would like to play this game forever, but life has to go on, so the game needs to end. So I need to set a timer to stop the game. And I also need to make items descend from the top of the screen to the bottom. I also need to spawn items. Uh, and I want it to keep spawning until one of either two conditions fulfill first. Either the time runs out or the game is won. And finally, I need to respond to click events. So a couple of things are happening here. I am, when I click on these food items, it has to um, know that I have to remove this from view right now. I need to update the orders here, and I also need to update the score. So how can RxJS help? So for setting a timer, we can use an interval. I set a default uh, value of one second here. So every second, this time interval observable is going to emit a value. But I also want to emit it until the game ends. So I also um, take, I, I use the timer to count down. So, um, this game duration is seconds. As it, uh, when it reaches that time, it will emit uh, a value. So my time interval will keep, keep uh, in every second emit values until this time runs out happens. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> okay, so next thing we need to do is to make items descend from the top of the screen. So, uh, the timekeeper function was the one that we saw just now. So we already have that. Now we're reusing it to, um, to make things happen. So in this case, I'm making uh, food descend from the top of the screen to the bottom. And I want to keep doing that until I click on it or time runs out. So descend, descend, descend until either of these fulfills. So I noticed that if you um, put two take untils within the pipe arguments, uh, whichever one fulfills first will, will cause the unsubscription to happen. It's a, it's a condescending, corn descending. <laughs> it's a corny joke for you. Okay, so the third thing is uh, we need to spawn an item until the time runs out or the game is won. Uh, it's very similar to the item uh, descending thing that you saw just now. Uh, the only difference is this case we want to be spawning the item. So this is happening on the game level, and the game needs to know, I need to keep spawning an item with the same conditions. Either the time runs out, or in this case, um, when the game is won. And I also want to do some cleanup after everything. So as when the game is won, we need to uh, show that the game is over, and we want to clear out the items array to get ready for the next game, uh, to, to populate the items with a new list for the new game. 
And then finally, I want to uh, respond to click events. Uh, so uh, this click event, I, I made it into a stream. I used the from event in the, in the item component itself. So it will keep listening for uh, whenever it's, it itself is being clicked. And it's going to uh, emit that to our first, uh, to our second, the item descending one. So remember, if we click on it, it's going to stop that observable. But I also want to do something here. I also want to check if the order itself is fulfilled or not. So, I, so this copy is being clicked on. The copy needs to um, like broadcast that, hey, copy is being clicked on. Go and check the order. Is copy part of the order? And then uh, if it is, then uh, you get a point. If you don't, if it's not, then you, you, you lose points. Then I also set a flag for found order. So this found order is actually the, the list of orders you see on the, the other side, the, the list. So if that item is found, I, if I set the flag to done, then it will, you will see a tick there. So visually, you'll see that, oh, that is done. I need to worry about the next thing. And then, uh, then I also check to see, hey, you fulfilled an order. Did you fulfill all the, all the orders yet? If you did, then you've completed the game. And I will, um, I will emit a value from this observable called order completed. Once the game gets a value from here, the game subscribes to this as well. Once it gets a value, then it knows, oh, the, this person has won. I, I should show this person that, that view and finish the game. And uh, I expected um, to use more from RxJS, mainly because I'm not so familiar. But in the end, uh, this was enough to, to the, for the purposes of my game. Oh, and that's, that's all for me. Uh, thank you.